All right, in this podcast, I sit down with Jet Miller. He's a lender mortgage broker from the States, and we talk about his business that he just started six months ago, servicing Americans and Canadians looking to buy real estate here in the Baja. Take a listen. I was amazed, and I think you will too. It opens up your mind and your options as a buyer here in the Baja. All right, now we can talk. Now we got it. Jet, we're live. Jet Miller, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, you've been coming up in, your name's been coming up a lot in our sales meetings and also our business chat with our real estate agents because of the services that you provide to our clients. Sure. Um, why, don't you, why don't we start there? What, <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, so one of the things I, I view myself as different, and, and I'm, I'm licensed in the U.S., mm -hmm. which is different for most uh, mortgage advisors or mortgage salespeople down here in, in Baja. Um, I view myself as an advisor, right? Mm -hmm. So if somebody goes or somebody suggested to go to a particular bank or a particular spot to get financing, and they only have one solution, well, then they're going to try their best to fit that client into that one solution, right? right? My viewpoint is that, Somebody needs to be comfortable. I mean, people are coming down to Mexico and, you know, my, my experience here has been nothing but extremely positive. There's always, and you know this on, on a real estate perspective, there's always this trust hurdle that we need to kind of get over, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of reason to have that trust, right? Um, but we kind of need to balance that. And so when, we, when someone's just assigned to one spot and they go in there and they go, this is my one option, um, they're not truly being given advice. So what I like to be able to do is walk in. There's about 25 different options that I know of, um, whether that be domiciled in Canada, domiciled in the U.S., you know, different lending options. Somebody doesn't may not fit in the box here, mm -hmm. but they fit in the box somewhere. How do we find that solution for them? So I really view myself as more of an advisor than somebody trying to sell them on something. So you're originally from where? Originally from Arizona. Okay. Yeah. What part of Arizona? From Scottsdale. All right. And yeah. you moved to Cabo how long ago? So I spent about 12 years in Chicago. I got my MBA at University of Chicago. Oh, you did? Booth. Yeah. Did you know yeah. I'm from Chicago? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, didn't I know that. Uh, born and raised. Okay. Um, not as smart as you to go to University of Chicago. I went to yeah. the University of Illinois. In oh, Champaign. okay. Perfect. So, in Champaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What okay. year did you graduate? So I graduated my MBA in 2015. All right. Okay. Yeah. I graduated undergrad from in Arizona at Arizona State. In 2007, mm -hmm. and I went, went to Chicago, was working in finance there, mm -hmm. investment management, et cetera, yep. down, in, down in the loop and all throughout Chicago. Um, but then, yeah, it was right when the pandemic started that I moved down to, to Mexico. It was going to be a short-lived thing. My best friends in the, in the MBA program mm -hmm. are uh, Mexican nationals that are from Mexico City. Get out of here. So that's, that's what kind of brought me down there initially. And then I realized that I wanted to stay. And yeah. here I am in Cabo. You know, it's funny, the GSB... Yeah. Um, and, I, and I know that acronym because my introduction to Cabo in 2001 okay. was because, and I've told this story a number of times, but it gives context to, and a connection to your story. Uh, 13 of us went on spring break, 2001, to Cabo San Lucas. Okay. So I wasn't doing my MBA at University of Chicago, but everyone right. else was. So my okay. friends were. Okay. And I was working and they said, do you want to go for a week? And I didn't even know where it was. <laughs> and so I looked up on a map and I was doing IT consulting at the time. Okay. And instead of going back to Chicago, because I was traveling out of town, I went to Cabo San Lucas. So that's what connected me here. Sure. And it's funny that you went to the GSB and you yeah. were up in Chicago before coming here. That's right. Yeah. I My first time in Cabo was, uh, I, it was even in spring break. 2002, but it was a family vacation. I was, okay. I was finishing up high school. Okay. All yeah. right. So I'm a few years <laughs> older than you. Yeah. But yeah. you, nonetheless, you've been here for a couple of years. Yeah. And while in Chicago, you were doing mortgages? So in Chicago, I was, yeah, I, so I did some IT consulting myself mm. uh, prior to going to, to Booth or GSP. Uh -huh. um, and then afterwards was in investment banking. Um, I was working on, I did a startup out of Dallas, actually. So a buddy of mine and I were, were doing... It's actually a software startup mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, and when we liquidated that right when the pandemic started, that's what brought me down to to, uh, to Mexico. I was already doing mortgages. Uh -huh. The majority of my business comes from financial advisors. Right. So because that's my background, 
that's who I'm comfortable working with. Um, most mortgage professionals are are used to their their lifeblood as agents, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. In the U.S., my lifeblood is really either a builder uh, that I work with out of Las Vegas, uh, and then and then financial advisors. Okay. As I've come down here, right, that that network has has expanded, and primarily I'm working with with agents, right? Okay. Um, most of which fall under fall under your camp. Oh so. yeah, under Ronnie <laughs> Vall. Well, yeah. Um, so how are you taking your experience up in the states, um, doing mortgages? Mm -hmm. How are you able to do that in Mexico? So the first first things first, the like a I guess a standard buyer right from the U.S. that comes down and is looking to buy. I guess this is a you know there's all different types of scenarios, but one that comes up a lot. If someone has significantly paid down or paid off their house in the U.S., mm -hmm. they're looking to buy a second home down here. They're really proud that they've had this that they've had their house paid off. They're looking at retirement. Maybe either it's just started or it's coming up in the next decade or so. Um, and so they're looking at how do they finance that house. And and what I walk them through is here's your options if we pull that like ultimately you're buying let's say a five hundred thousand dollar condo right. right between down payment and a loan you need five hundred thousand dollars plus your closing closing costs. Where are we going to pull that money, right? And we can kind of spend the time. Here's what your options look like if we do a loan here in Mexico. Here's mm -hmm. what your options are if we do a cash out refinance or a HELOC or something like that in the U.S. Right. And let's let's talk about what your specific short term strategy is, long term strategy is, and really evaluate those options. And what I've found is that when someone sits down and they see those options, they talk through them. There's a there's a really strong conviction as to which path they want to go down. Because I'm not trying to sell them on anything, right? I'm happy to take them any which direction. Here's what those options are. And once they once they know, now there's a lot of confidence in, in the direction that they want to go. Okay, so as a how many clients here in Cabo have you helped? I've helped dozens. All right. The majority of which, the overwhelming majority of what of which, and this has really only been in the last six months, have have all been US based loans. Okay. Right? Yep. So yeah. they have equity in their property back in the States, That's right. they borrow against that equity mm -hmm. and they're coming down here as a cash buyer. That's right. Okay. And, and, a, and a lot of the times, you know, the bank, the banks here, the options here, they do a really good job with the, with the guidelines that they have, right? So you got to fit into a, a pretty small box. Right. You fit into that box, all is good. Right. When we go back to the U S we've got that box grows, right? Okay. So now we can do, you know, an asset back loan, meaning, you don't have income, you've already retired, but you've got the assets to justify your income. Or, you know, you're a self-employed borrower, so, you know, you run a business, but you write off all the, the income because you want to be tax efficient. Yep. So, you know, we can spend time going, okay, let's do a bank statement loan. Let's do, you know, let's look at your corporate returns. Let's let's find a different way to kind of access that cash. Yep. Those flexibilities, I'm sure they will eventually, you know, uh, be available here. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's still a pretty small box to get to fit into. Correct. Um, so dozens... Yeah. And only in the last six months. And only in the last six months. That's right. And did you just by chance run into this opportunity of dozens, if not potentially now hundreds of clients? Yes. I would say that I ran into this. This, You know, like I moved out here. My family, my dad's family business, I guess you should say our family business, mm -hmm. is an insulated concrete block. Okay. So, you know, my dad's got, you know, thousands of buildings in the U.S., it makes a lot of sense to be, to use it. It's called OmniBlock, mm -hmm. you know, and we use that here. So we've got houses up in in Chileno and El Dorado, Puerto Los Cabos, etc. That was initially going to be my focus, mm -hmm. right, when I came down here. But in meeting, so in doing that, I'm talking to developers, I'm talking to real estate agents, and, and there's this real need for somebody to help, you know, uh, buyers get through that process because I know that a lot of real estate agents run into somebody who's interested in buying, right. but they can't get the answers that they're looking for on the financing side. Correct. And that, that's not only frustrating for the agents, but that's frustrating for the buyer itself. Right. And so I, I'm trying to kind of, you know, fill in that gap to make the whole process that much more enjoyable for, for the buyer. Are you doing the same thing for Canadians? I am doing it for the Canadians, um, or for Canadians, not the Canadians, but yes, for Canadians. Uh -huh. um, the I'm not licensed in Canada, uh -huh. right? So I've got a couple partners in Canada and I did all this because I, what I didn't want to have happen is I didn't want to be the same salesperson that's already been down here where, oh, you're Canadian. Okay. I've got one, I've got one trip. One product. I'm trying to fit and I'm trying to sell you on it. That's just not how I work. Mm -hmm. So in order to be able to properly advise them, I said, okay, there's reverse mortgages in, in what's called the chip loan in, in Canada. There's cash out refis, there's HELOCs. The way that they're lending is different. So I've had to spend time 
learning how, you know, like their interest is calculated twice a month instead of monthly, right? Which is just really, yeah, just a, are payments done twice a month? Payments are still done monthly, uh, but their interest is calculated semi annually, which is just a, a unique difference, right? right? Same thing with if you go to the, you know, the Yahoo's, Moxie's, Intercoms here in Mexico, there's differences, right? None of them are red flags, they're just right. differences, right. Right? right? So maybe it's a 25 year loan instead of a 30 year loan, mm -hmm. right? Um, maybe you need to have the life insurance policy so that it gets paid off first. Right. And then you've got, you know, you, your, your heirs that benefit the house free and clear of a mortgage. None of them are bad. They're just differences to be aware of. So you are partnering then with uh, mortgage professionals in Canada? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And how many different kind of loan products would that expose you to? Almost the same amount as we have in, in the U.S. Okay. So again, uh, cash out refis, HELOCs, mm -hmm. um, they call them... In, so in the U.S., we call it a qualified mortgage, which is something that would fall under Fannie or Freddie, mm -hmm. or a non-qualified mortgage, which just means we got to find another investor, or it's a jumbo loan, or doing a bank statement asset loan. They kind of call them, as I understand, like an A investor or B investor, A loans, B loans. Okay. Kind of similar, just different terminology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have those differences. So right. even if you're a self-employed borrower, you don't have, you know, the income that you're showing in your tax returns. If you don't have it on the tax returns, you're not going to fit into the bucket here okay. in Mexico. But that doesn't mean you can't fit there. So you've done, you've already had clients in Canada? I've already had clients in Canada that I've referred, so like I'm not closing the loan. Sure. I'm just advising them on what they should be doing. And then I'm advising them on, okay. on who to talk to, how we want to structure it. I kind of manage that handoff yep. on, hey, you know, so-and-so broker, here's what we're going to do. Here's the profile. Here's why they're looking to accomplish this. And this is the loan that's going to, you know, that's going to best suit them. Okay. Um, of the U.S. clients that yes. you service, what states are they originating from? So I'm licensed in 18 states, mm -hmm. um, which is basically all the 18 states that I know of the people that Come I've from. run into here, okay. right? And I can always add state licenses if I have to. All right. Um, so those states, Illinois? So Illinois, yeah. Texas? Texas. Illinois, Texas. Arizona. Yeah, so if I just go down the I mean... Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Nevada, yeah. Colorado, Texas, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin, Florida, New York, Minnesota, Florida, uh -huh. not New York. New York is the is one of the most unique states. So I've I've actually worked at at uh, nationwide companies that are licensed in forty nine states. And New York is the and New York is not one of them. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, are there any states up to today where a clients come to you? where they're from yeah. that you haven't been able to service? Um, yes, and that was Washington State, and okay. so I added I, I You just added. added. Yeah. And how difficult it is it for you to add another state? Depends Each on state's the state. a little bit different, yeah. Okay. Each state's a little bit different. So like Utah's a little bit difficult for me to, to, to get, um, but I have colleagues that work in Utah. So it's I still have that kind of... Okay, so you can still, states, so you can can still advise... I can still advise. ...clients right. from other states, even New York. Exactly. Because you have a network of people you can refer them to. That's right. That's okay. right. All right. right. Great. And how do clients typically get a hold of you if it's not from a real estate agent? So it is typically through a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't put anything into into advertising, into marketing. Um, basically, I partner up with, with somebody who's uh, very good at marketing their brand. Mm -hmm. um, that's why one of the reasons I'm here on this podcast, yes. obviously. And it's, I mean, you, you've done a fantastic job with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather be the one support... Like, Obviously, the end, the end client is, you know, the, the home buyer is, is my client and to some extent, right? Yeah. But I never forget that they're my client because I was referred to them by a, a real estate agent. So Correct. I view, you know, yourself or agents on your team as really my customer mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I got to keep you guys happy because that's the, that's the that's, lifeline. That's the lifeline. Yeah. Right. Um, but the reality is, is in order to, you know, to do that, that's what makes the whole process smoother anyway. Right. What's it looking like in this? I, so another connection to you and me, yeah. like from a prior life, I was selling real estate in Chicago, still hold my license, um, but I was doing mortgages also. Okay. Um, so we would be able to get a clear to close done within 30 days. Sure. And this is back in the mid, early 2000s. Okay. Um, what's it looking like in today's market? So in the, in the U.S., I've done I've done jumbo loans in as little as like 13 days. All right. That's not a comfortable pace. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. to say that it is. Um, but generally speaking, we're doing jumbo loans in 25 to 30 days. Mm -hmm. We're doing, you know, conventional loans or HELOCs in like 20 to 25 days. Okay. Um, you know, it's that's a very comfortable pace for us. 
we're all, we're always going to be dependent on how fast a client wants to move, right? So if I'm waiting, if I'm waiting ten days for documents to come in, well then that that timeline just kind of gets extended. Um, here in Mexico, here in Mexico, there's as you know, and you probably know, I, I know you know this a lot better than I do. There's a lot more than just the financing. Right. Yeah. And so it's not generally the approval of the loan that ends up holding things up. It's usually just the process in general takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Right. Which of my agents have you worked with? <laughs> I've worked. I've worked with several. So Rob, uh, Megan O'Leary. Uh -huh. um, I've got. I've got a whole host of them. And yeah. They're all going to be up frustrated that I'm not. No, remember right their now. names. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But those are the two that I. I, I spoke with the most, most recently this morning. Okay. No, it's not wow. even the most. It's just I. They're fresh in my mind because I yep. talked to them this morning. Okay, cool. And you, you don't have an office here, do you? You just work out of your house? Right now, I'm working out of the house. Yeah. Um, I've got obviously I'm a branch manager in Las Vegas uh, through the national lender that I that I work with. So that's that's kind of the home office, so to speak. Okay. Um, and I'm working on getting a location okay. here here in Cabo, more, more likely San Lucas. Okay, cool. I'm sorry, more likely San Jose. San Jose, because yeah. you live in San Jose. I live in San Jose. Um, what? What do you anticipate the mortgage market in the States? Because most of your clients are Americans and they're sure. getting the loans in the States. How do you see the mortgage market right now? Well, one of the things I like to say is, you know, if we all had a, a snow globe, you know, and we knew exactly how, how things were going to work out, we'd be trading mortgage bonds on a yacht somewhere. So yeah. I, don't, I don't profess to know. Um, but I, I'd say I have like a murky view, right? Uh -huh. And I'll be right maybe a little over 50% of the time, but, but not more. My view is that, like, we're, look, we're, things are pretty stable right now. So people still talk about, you know, hey, we're at these, like, huge highs. The reality is the market was shocked because we went from, you know, 2.5%, 3% to 7.5% seemingly overnight, right? Mm -hmm. It was about a six-month span. So, you know, when you look at that, that became, like, a very big sticker shock for a lot of buyers. That's big, been baked in. You know, we've been, we've been kind of at that level, actually a little bit lower, you know, kind of in the mid-sixes now for about a year. And I know that as of this year, like if we compare, if I do that with my colleagues and we look at what's January and February, and March looking like this year compared to last, we're significantly more busy. Okay. Significantly more busy. Do you foresee that the rest of 24? I do, yeah. I mean, there's always, there has historically been a little bit of a softening going into an election year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, who knows, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, you know, on, on, on the Democrat side, they're currently in office and they're going to want to, to the extent that they can, make interest rates a little bit more affordable, use that as a, as a little bit of a chip. And so we might see a little bit of, of declines coming up, but I don't profess to doubt, okay. right? Yeah. I do think that demand is there yeah. because a lot of the demand that was in there in 2000, 2021, it was still there in 22 and 23. They were just waiting, I'm waiting for prices to decline. I'm waiting for rates to decline. As soon as rates decline, the buyers are there. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, um, you know, whether it's 6% or 7%, and many people are expecting to go below 6% at yeah. some point this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. 2024. Um, our market here in the Baja is so tied to the U.S. real estate market, and the U.S. real estate market's tied to the interest rates. That's right. So your business is very important to what our real estate market does, but even more importantly, after today, sure, you are able to provide liquidity to our American and Canadian buyers. That's right. To buy here. That's right. And if you're if you're doing a HELOC, like if a HELOC is their best route, those are usually adjustable rates. So, HELOC, just for those that don't know, oh yeah, is, sorry, it's a home equity line of credit, uh -huh. right? So we do home equity line of credit, which is a HELOC. We do HE loans, mm -hmm. so it's a fixed rate and it's just a loan, so home equity loan, um, cash out refinancing, just basically. You owe little or, you know, basically you're going to expand how much you owe on the house. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that have locked in two and a half, three percent interest rates, we try to avoid doing that. Right. Right. Um, but it, it nonetheless is an option. For all of those, I just say there are refinancing options. So for the person who's got their house paid off, they want to free up the cash to buy a place down in Mexico, for example. We can do, you know, a cash out refinance. If interest rates do decline, they do go below 6%, we'll just do a refinance on that new right. loan Correct. and lower the rate. Right. Right. Well, Jet, thank you. Yeah. This has been very good. <laughs> Have you already presented to our sales team? In I did present to the okay. sales team. I think that we're trying to schedule another time. I think another one is questions. in order. And when yeah. this podcast gets released, a number okay. of our agents probably will be reaching out to you. Perfect. Aside from yeah. Megan and Rob. That's right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Jet. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Until the next one. Bye for now.
Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nick Fong Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Ronaval Real Estate. And follow Nick on Instagram at Nick Fong underscore Ronaval. Ready to find your Baja dream home? Check out the latest property listings at ronaval.com or findmexicohouses.com. Hasta luego.